Okay, it looks like most everyone is logged in, so why don't we go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Dan Monahan, and I'm the North American Managing Director for Nemechek SIA. I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, Plugging Analysis and Design into Today's 3D Workflows. Now, this topic is becoming more important as increasingly governments, owners, architects, and contractors are requiring BIM or Building Information Modeling and are asking structural and civil engineers to participate in collaborative model-based workflows. But plugging into these workflows can be difficult with traditional structural design tools. In this 45-minute webinar, I want to introduce you to SIA Engineer, a new breed of integrated structural design software that is helping firms who are looking to migrate to or improve their 3D workflows. For those of you who are new to GoToWebinar, on your screen, you should see the GoTo controls. They should look something like this. If you have questions during the meeting, please type your questions in the question window here. At the end of the presentation, I will try to answer as many questions as time permits. Now, for some of you, Nemechek may be a new brand, so I just have one slide on the company. You may be surprised to know that Nemechek is actually the largest AEC IT company outside the United States in the EMEA region. We develop a large portfolio of software for the architecture, engineering, and construction markets. In North America, we're known primarily for our design-oriented brands, softwares like ARCHICAD, one of the world's most popular BIM programs for architects, Vectorworks, a line of elegant 2D, 3D design software that has gone on to become the best-selling CAD program on the Macintosh, and a leading design program on Windows, and Cinema 4D, an award-winning animation and rendering application used in Hollywood and television for special effects or in the AEC industry to create really high-end photorealistic client presentations. But outside the United States, we're actually more renowned for engineering and construction technology. And the software that I'd like to introduce to you today is SIA Engineer. SIA is an acronym. It stands for Scientific Application. And while it also may be a new brand to you, it's not new software. It has a long development history, over 35 years now, and as you'll see in my presentation, is a very proven solution that offers some very nice benefits for firms that are looking to migrate to or improve their 3D workflows. So, who uses SIA Engineer? Well, most of our customers are consulting engineering firms working on interesting projects in steel and concrete, in addition, you'll find SIA Engineer in departments in larger industrial firms like Siemens, Fluor, or Alstrom Energy. And they work on all different types of projects, which is another real advantage of SIA Engineer. It's a very flexible design software program. While most of our customers are working in the building space, i.e. buildings that involve architects, we also have a large number of customers that work on more industrial types of projects, energy, Petroleum and chemical installations is another area in which a lot of our customers are working. Transportation and infrastructure type projects. Environmental projects. And we have some very specific technology for the design of scaffolding structures, precast manufacturers, and metal building manufacturers. So that gives you a good idea of who we are and what our clients are doing with SIA. Now, let's talk more specifically about the technology itself. Technically, SIA Engineer is an analysis and design software program, but as you'll see, it offers some unique benefits that go beyond analysis. We really try to make it easy for engineers to explore different design alternatives very quickly, to optimize those designs for cost or sustainability, and what's becoming more important is to be able to easily collaborate with others involved in the design and construction process, whether they be designers or architects upstream or contractors and fabricators downstream. Now, I like to distill SIA into four key benefits. First, fast and efficient modeling. It's just a very elegant modeling program. In addition, we have some very unique technology that makes it easy for you to leverage models coming in from designers. Second, advanced analysis and multi-material design. With SIA, we really try to make advanced analysis, things like nonlinear analysis and dynamics, not only feasible, but cost-effective. And where we can, we'll try to centralize your design tasks into one multi-material environment. Third, automatic and coordinated documentation. For firms that are required to produce professional reports, 
This feature alone is why some firms choose CA Engineer. Last, interoperability and collaboration. CA Engineer is an open platform, and our goal is to make it easy for you to plug CA into as many different workflows as you need in order to get your job done. So let's start with the first benefit, fast and efficient modeling. A unique feature in CA Engineer is its ability to maintain both the physical structural model and the analytical model in the same project file. So with SIA, you can start a project by importing a physical structural model from a designer and from it quickly derive an accurate analytical model. Or we can start with analysis and from our analytical model, we could derive an accurate physical structural model. And while these models are related in SIA, it's not a one-to-one -one relationship. You can have eccentricities and other analytical model information that you need to have in order to have a correct analytical model that has no effect on the physical structural model. And in the structural model, you can control the exact position of members or even import non-analytical geometry that may be necessary for documentation or model coordination, but has no effect on analysis. This ability in SIA Engineer to work in both directions and with both models opens up some very interesting workflow possibilities that you just don't have today. Now, let's take a look at this first workflow i.e. leveraging model data from designers into analysis in a little more detail. In this example, we'll import in a 2D CAD drawing and use it as the basis for our design. From SIA Engineer's import dialog, we could choose to filter the architect's model by turning off layers and entities. We could import this in as structural members or as line work, as I've done here. Now in this vignette, I have two drawings I previously imported, so we'll just turn those layers on this cross-section drawing, and this longitudinal section drawing. And if we rotate into a 3D view, you can see all three layers together. Next, using this drawing as reference, we can use the line works as pick points to trace around the design, or I can convert the 2D line work into 3D structural objects. In this example, I've defined a wall with a specific height and concrete material. Then, Using the tools in SIA's BIM toolbox, I can begin to convert this line work into 3D walls that are ready for analysis. This concept also works for 3D line work. Here we have some geometry that was generated in a conceptual modeling program called Rhino. With the geometry now in SIA Engineer, we can go to the cross-section library, define a cross-section shape, Then we can select the line work and convert it into structural objects, either individually or in groups and objects. This ability to recycle this line work is also another advantage of SIA Engineer, particularly when it comes to this curved geometry. In many analysis programs, even if you're able to get this curved geometry in, the lines are segmented, broken up into a lot of different smaller line segments, and it's not very usable. One of the big advantages of SIA Engineer in this workflow is we're able to maintain the curvature of that geometry, making it very practical to leverage into analysis and design. When we talk about leveraging BIM models, typically we're talking about linking to Revit structures if it's a building project, or maybe Tecla if it's a more civil or industrial type of project. When linking BIM to analysis and design, it's important to note that what we're linking is not the physical structural model, but the analytical model. In this exchange, SIA works very well, and it works bi-directionally, i.e. analytical models created in Revit structures or Tecla can be imported into SIA Engineer, and SIA Engineer models can be exchanged with Revit or Tecla. In this example, we have what appear to be some academic models generated in Revit structures. And while these models look simple, they represent some very typical conditions that cause problems in other engineering and design programs. These include curved and sloping 1D members in steel and concrete, truss-like objects, mixed materials with unusual slab geometries, precast elements, and mixed material constructions with curved, sloping, or holes. Now the exchange between Revit structures and SIA is based upon a mapping table. Default mapping tables are provided for various international standards. And the mapping allows you to map custom Revit families to objects in SIA Engineer, as well as the other way around. 
When you map a new member, it's stored permanently in the table, so the more you use the mapping link, the less mapping you'll need to do. And the mapping can be stored centrally on a server so that all the engineers can work off the same table. You could have the plugin automatically launch CIA when finished, or you can save your export to a file. Here, if we open the file in CIA Engineer, you can see the results. And of course, any changes we make in CIA will be remapped to Revit. There are some even nice change management features that make it easy to keep track of changes and revisions as you're working between the two softwares. Now, while these models I showed you were kind of simple, this link is being used daily on real-world projects all over the world. Now, in addition to direct links to structural BIM programs like Revit or Tecla, where we're exchanging the analytical models, SIA also has a unique ability to leverage models created in almost any 3D program. You can easily leverage models generated from SketchUp or Rhino, as I showed earlier, or even architectural BIM programs like Archicad, Revit Architecture, Vectorworks, um, MEP programs, or plant design software programs like SmartPlant 3D. And then you can use those models as reference or background geometry to build up your design. So let's take a look at this reference model workflow in a little bit more detail. In this example, we're going to import in an IFC model into SIA Engineer. If you're not familiar with IFC, it's a neutral file format for the exchange of BIM model data. The advantage of IFC is that not only can you import geometry, but also the data or information in the BIM model as well. When we import in an IFC model, we have a few different options. We can choose to convert it to members upon import, or I can just import the entire model as reference geometry. Then, using the BIM toolbox, as I demonstrated before, I can begin to pick and choose which parts of the architect's model I want to use for my parts of the design process. In this case, we can quickly convert the slabs into 2D elements. Now, one of the interesting points of this workflow is that as I'm modeling, I have the architect's model as background or reference geometry, which gives me a context that I normally wouldn't have if I was just dealing with the structural model itself. The other advantage to IFC is because we have the information as well as the geometry, when we're working iteratively with the designer, there are some nice change management tools that SIA offers. In this example, we're going to import in a new IFC model, and SIA will compare the new and existing models and bring open this dialog box. Here we can see graphically the entities that have been edited or deleted or changed, or we can step through the design on a member-by-member -member basis, accepting or rejecting any changes. In this case, I'm going to turn the structural layer on so we can see the architecture and the structure working together. Now, when a model reaches a certain complexity, you're not always going to want to deal with it in 3D. There are several strategies in SIA that we have for breaking apart a larger model into more manageable pieces. We can cut 2D plan views and work in floor plan views. We can uh, cut 2D views and work in section or elevation views. There are even strategies that we have where we can break apart a large model into more manageable pieces and have teams of engineers work on parts of the design, and then we can bring that back for final documentation. As I mentioned, a side benefit of this workflow is that you can have the reference models as background or reference geometry that you can turn off or on. For example, in this illustration, you could see the Revit structure model that was imported into SIA Engineer via the Revit to SIA link, but you can also see the Revit architecture model imported in as an IFC. Not only does this give you a context that you wouldn't normally have if you were just working on the structural model, but when it comes times for changes, we can now choose to either use the link or we can simply import a new architect's model and adjust our structural model to match really depends on the project. And this reference model workflow works with any geometry. For example, here we have the same design, but now you can see how the structure and the MEP are working together. 
Now what's great is these two workflows are not mutually exclusive. Each has advantages and disadvantages. You could use both the direct link and the reference model workflow together, depending on the situation. Now this is a demo that we worked up with the engineering department at Haskell, a leading integrated design build firm. Um, they set us this file originally to test the Revit structure's interoperability with SIA engineer. Um, what they found in, is that in their analysis program, the sloping beams and the curve members were causing some problems. In addition, this project had some precast elements. Now, when we took a look at this model in Revit structures, one of the things that we noticed is that these precast columns had corbels and that many of the double T's had openings. However, both were modeled as simple 1D elements. This is a good example of where having both the Revit link and support for IFC is helpful. If we just relied on the Revit link, Revit would have exported all of the precast elements as 1D members and assumed that the holes and the corbels didn't need to be taken into account. To avoid this simplifying assumption, what we did is in Revit, we filtered the model. Here you could see the members that we knew would map correctly using the Revit to see a link. Then we exported via IFC the elements that we knew are not supported by the Revit link, i.e. things like foundational geometry. Remember, in the Revit link, you're always exchanging the analytical model. So any foundation geometry won't come across. Foundations come across just as nodal supports. And then we looked at the members that we wanted more control over, i.e. the precast parts. Then in SIA Engineer, we merged the two models together. Next, using the same conversion tools that I demoed earlier, we could pick and choose how we as engineers wanted to handle the corbels and the holes and the double T's. Now, because Haskell has a steel fab shop, we also showed them how they could easily move from engineering directly into fabrication and not have to go back through Revit. This optimized steel model could then be used to help Haskell plan production and to drive the machines in the fab shop. This direct to fabrication is something that Nemechek is doing both in steel as well as in precast concrete. So making it easy to leverage models created by others is one way SIA engineer makes modeling fast and efficient. But what if you don't have a model? Or what if it's really more appropriate or efficient for the engineer to start with analysis? This is another way that SIA engineer can help engineers migrate or improve their 3D workflows. In this vignette, I'll start with a steel cross-section shape chosen from the library. Then, using the drawing tools in SIA, I'll sketch out a curved beam, something that's not easy to do in many analysis programs. Next, we'll change it from a simple profile to a non-prismatic shape. Then, I'll choose another profile for a column. Using the accurate snapping, I can easily align the bottom of the column and the beam. If I don't like the way the beam and the column are intersecting, I can simply right click and make the change. Now we're going to add supports because we're going to see results on this later. Next, I'll define a concrete material. Then using this last drawing mode, I could pick, the set, I could pick up the center line of this beam and drag out a 10 foot shell element. Then we could add supports to the shell. And like you would in any modern modeling program, you're not having to define the position of every member or node. We can simply select it and multi-copy it. In this case, pull out four copies. Or I can select the frame and I can copy it over to the last shell element. Now the modeling in C is pretty sophisticated. In this next step, we're going to perform a Boolean operation. So I'll grab that concrete material, and then we'll just sketch in an arc. We can now use this shape to add the surfaces together to create a reveal or an overhang, or I can use that arc to clip a hole in the shell element. Now, as we're modeling, the meshing is all happening in the background, which is another nice advantage in SIA. So very quickly, we just worked up a, a simple design vignette. But remember, underneath this physical structural model is the analytical model. So at any moment in the design process, I can look at some results. Here I can see the bending moments in the steel, or I could look at the stress distributions in the concrete. 
And then I could see how the effect of my analysis will immediately affect my physical structural model or any changes to the physical structural model will impact analysis. Now this is a good example of why it's important for structural engineers who want to work in 3D have access to good modeling tools like SIA Engineer. This is the new Spartak soccer stadium being built in Moscow for the 2018 World Cup games. It was designed by AECOM and AECOM also uses Revit structures. However, in this project, they found that modeling this non-orthogonal geometry was a bit easier in SIA Engineer than in Revit structures. But more importantly, because of SIA's by modeling, they were able to work back and forth between the analytical model and the physical structural model in SIA Engineer to optimize the roof's geometry. Then, once the project was solidified, it was sent downstream to Revit structures for final documentation. Now, in addition to the graphical modeling interface, SIA does have a traditional table input. In the table, we could easily input members, nodes, or loads. Um, it also makes it very easy sometimes to edit things. Sometimes it's easier to edit them from a table view. And then, of course, the table also provides some interoperability with Excel. Now, in addition to the table input, you can also design and see it with parametric objects. Um, if you're not familiar with parametric objects, this truss is a good example. Instead of designing this truss by sketching out some bars and nodes, this truss is actually defined by parameters. So if we want to make the truss longer, we don't have to redraw it. We simply can type in a new length value and it will automatically update. Or if we want to change its configuration from a box truss to a triangular truss, we can just simply make that change to a parameter in a dialog box. So let's take a look at SIA's parametric modeling technology. Here we can see the library of parametric objects that ship as part of SIA Engineer's catalog block library. In this example, we're going to choose a frame object and just drop it into the design. Now, once these catalog blocks are placed into the design, they're completely editable. I can change anything about them. In this case, I'm just going to change its orientation. And, like other objects in SIA, if we need to model additional frames, I could just select it and drag out three copies. Now in this next example, I'm going to take that frame object and change some of its parameters. In this case, the number of bays and the height of the frame. And then we'll place that into the design. We'll select the frame. And this time, when we use the multi-copy command, we'll add a connecting member to add some more interesting geometry. Next, we'll grab a truss. We'll configure the truss. And then we can place the truss into the design. So as you can see, modeling with intelligent parametric objects, or catalog blocks as they're called in SIA Engineer, can make the design process very fast and efficient. Now what's interesting is that while we ship with a library of these pre-configured parametric objects, the real power is in how easy it is we make, make it to create your own. There's a point and click interface that doesn't require any uh, mastering of a lisping routine or .NET programming language. And you could take these objects and combine them with other objects to drive more complex structural systems or even entire buildings. That's what I've done in this example here. Here we have a simpler butler building, some gable frames, some purlins, and some bracing. But there's a relationship between all of these objects. So if I make a change to the frame, in this case, the height of the frame, the span distance, and the number of frames, you could see that the entire building or structural system is being updated. This idea of being able to easily model and analyze any shape, either freeform or parametric, also extends into cross-section design. SIA Engineer ships with a huge library of standard profiles as well as parametric shapes for things like welded or built-up sections, 
But it also offers a great cross-section editor that makes it easy to create custom profiles. Custom profiles can be created from any number of arbitrary parts with or without holes, and the cross-section editor in CS supports the creation of thin-walled, tapered members, multi-material members, and even phase sections. In addition, you can import shapes from any CAD program, and SEAL will automatically calculate the sectional characteristics of any imported profile and store them in the cross-section library. And once your model is created, we make it easy to load. You'll find some very nice load generator for things like, for things like wind, snow, and seismic and mobile loads according to the codes, as well as a very nice graphical loading interface that makes it easy to apply and manage load and load combinations. For example, here you can see the wind loads being applied in this direction are weaker than the wind loads being applied in this direction. And if you click on a load, a property dialog box will open where you can check and edit the wind load coefficient or the wind load curve or other properties define this load. And SIA Engineer has an ability to represent unusual loading conditions and makes it easy to apply loads to unusual geometries. In this example, the Minneapolis office of HGA asks us to apply a load to this doubly curved wall. Now there's a number of ways to do this in SIA, but for this example what we did is we set a working plane perpendicular to the wall to project the loads in the x direction. Now, if we need to change the direction, we can simply change the orientation of the working plane. Next, we define the load and then just simply sketched out the load on the working plane and then projected it onto the surface. Now, once applied, we can easily change anything about this load from the properties palette. So, loading is another way that SIA Engineer makes modeling fast and efficient. The second benefit SIA Engineer can offer is advanced analysis. Where we can, we'll try to centralize your design tasks into one integrated multi-material environment. And for complex structures, we make nonlinear analysis not only feasible, but really cost efficient. Now, SIA is an FEA program supporting first, second, and third order analysis according to a number of different methods. But What's great about CNFEA is just how well the meshing works. As you saw in the modeling demo earlier, in CIA Engineer you model with real world elements. The, the mesh is automatically managed for you. Now it's not black box. There are some very nice interfaces for refining the mesh, but for the most part it just works, even if the geometry gets complex. Another nice feature in CIA is that it makes it very easy to derive practical design values from your finite element calculations. Typical FEA programs give you a lot of values and some very nice stress diagrams, but as an engineer, you have to do something with those results. In SIA, we can automatically integrate the internal forces and display them along a defined distance or width. Here, for example, you can see the results in a mat foundation or in a shear wall or in a beam coupling system. So being able to pull out these practical design values is another benefit of SIA's FEA analysis. Now in terms of design, you'll find some pretty extensive capabilities. Of course we do static linear and nonlinear analysis, as well as advanced nonlinear analysis, dynamic analysis, as well as time dependent and sequential analysis. And there are also some really nice tools for modeling the interaction between the structure and the subsoil. Having all of these analysis capabilities integrated into a single modeling environment makes SIA very efficient for day-to-day -day work. But it also means that you won't hit your head on the ceiling very quickly. With SIA, you'll have a design program that will let your firm effectively take on bigger, more complex projects. In regards to design, here again, we try to centralize your design activities into one environment. This not only makes the design process more efficient, but can also reduce errors that sometimes happen when you have to manually coordinate disparate analytical models. SIA Engineer offers good support for the IBC codes as well as the Euro codes and specific country annexes. It also has support for Indian and Brazilian codes and we're currently working on implementing Russian and Chinese codes. In regards to SEAL, just some highlights. Um, we could actually do the plastic analysis of steel structures. Um, we also can do connection modeling and connection design. Um, we can generate steel overview drawings. And we also have a unique ability to optimize uh, gable frames, welded, or built-up sections. 
And because of SIA's modeling and design capabilities, it's a really great solution for concrete. It can do the design of 1D and 2D members in any geometry and offer some advanced concrete analysis capabilities, including the ability to input the practical reinforcing. In this example, we'll edit the transparency of the strip footer so we can see what's going on inside. SIA ships with an editable library of reinforcing schemes as well as the ability to model free bars. Here we'll simply choose a scheme and then we can apply it to the footer. Once modeled, you can generate 2D pictures or export the model to a detailing program. Uh, in addition for TiltUp, we have a partnership with TiltWorks where we can integrate the TiltUp wall panels into SIA Engineer. So if you're doing TiltUp work, this is something maybe we could help you with. Now for checks we don't have, we can link SIA to any Excel check or we could build our own. In addition, SIA has a new open check technology called Design Forms. Now there's two versions of Design Forms, the user version and the builder version. Here we're looking at the builder version. It provides a MathCAD-like interface for developing engineering checks. The advantage is that Design Forms are tuned for structural engineering, so variables like typical cross-section properties that you would normally would have to define by scratch in Excel or MathCAD are pre-programmed and available. Here you can see the inputs for this column base plate check. And on the right hand side you can see the results. Once created in the builder, these design forms can be saved out as a user version which provides a simplified interface for running the checks. Or these checks can be linked to SIA Engineer and run like any built-in checks. You're now not dependent on the software company. You can easily write your own checks inside of SIA Engineer. For some offices, this is a real game changer. Now, the last subject I want to touch on in regards to advanced analysis is SIA's advanced optimization and sequential analysis capabilities. Up until now, the term structural optimization is understood mostly as an automatic search for the most economical beam profile or plate thickness. However, finding an ideal solution to design problems is much more complex than simply fulfilling the bearing capacity of a beam or a slab. Based on the design goals, there can be several multiple objectives to balance and limitations to consider like serviceability, safety, or cost or construction. These multiple objectives can all be considered in SIA's parametric optimization capabilities. Now the way this works in SIA is that first you define the problem in SIA Engineer. The results are then exported, an optimization algorithm or method is chosen, and then the model is adapted, and the cycle starts over. This system allows the engineer to really leverage the power of the computer to run hundreds or even thousands of iterations to search for optimal design values. So that's a pretty good overview of SIA Engineer's analysis and design capabilities. Next, let's look at documentation. First, we'll start with the calculation report. Now, most analysis programs are famous for churning out reams of tabular data so a lot of time is spent organizing and formatting this so that it can be presented for peer review or for understandable calculation books. And of course, every time the design changes, this formatting has to be checked and often redone. SIA Engineer makes it very easy to put together professional looking reports complete with chapters and subchapters as well as illustrations and model views. And because the reports are linked to the model, if the design changes, the reports of course automatically update. In addition, the reports in SIA are bi-directional, so the reports are actually another working view of the design. Any change that you make in the report view will also automatically update the design. This ensures that your reports to your design are always in sync and virtually eliminates any coordination errors. Now, this is a PDF of a calculation report generated from SIA Engineer. Reports in SIA Engineer are based on templates, so it's easy to create a calculation book with just the information you want to report and have your reports look exactly the way you need. You can import graphics or digital images into your reports. You can even embed hyperlinks. If I switch back to the report and we scroll down, we could, you could see that we could embed illustrations
we could even insert formatted text from Word or Excel and, and include these live model views in with the report, which is a nice way of sometimes archiving what's happening. What's very nice is the calculation report writer, while it's linked, runs separately. This is a huge advantage as now one engineer can work on the calc package while at the same time the other is still designing. Here's another example of how you can use this 3D PDF export option. In this example, we imported the architect's model and merged it with the structural model. If I change my transparency settings and we zoom in, we can see the architect's model and the engineering model working together in this view. Now, it's important to remember that this presentation didn't require any extra work. It comes about from SIA's ability to import models from designers and its support for open standards like Adobe's 3D PDF. We can also extract coordinated 2D drawings from the 3D models. Here, you can see the 3D section plane that is defining the 2D drawing. And as you would expect, these views are live, so any edits to the model will automatically update the drawing. And you can use these 2D section cuts to generate 2D working views of the design. If needed, these 2D drawings could then be exported to a CAD system, or you could share the 3D model with another BIM authoring program or model checking tool. For drawing and presentation boards, SIA has a nice page layout environment. In this example, like the 3D PDF example, we merged the architect's model with the engineering's model. So when we cut this plan view, we could see the architect's information being displayed as gray, which adds a nice context to the engineering drawing. And because SIA Engineer can maintain both the physical and the analytical models together, the drawings we generate can be dimensionally accurate. Also note how we can incorporate drawings, model views, and analysis results all on the same page. Here's another example. Here you can clearly see which wall on this floor plan is the one that's being analyzed. This ability gives you new ways to present and document your designs, letting you hopefully reduce communication errors or RFIs. In addition, we can add any reports or tables to these layouts. Here, for example, you can see the bill of materials for this project. And in SIA, you can also assign custom data tags to any objects in the drawing. For example, to these precast parts, we could add pricing or order or delivery information, and that can also be tracked along with the design. Another way that SIA Engineer can help with constructability is checking for clashes. Because SIA Engineer maintains both the physical structural model and the analytical model, it can automatically find clashes based on user inputs. These clashes could be conflicts in our structural models we see here, or they could be collisions with models that we import into SIA Engineer. So the last key benefit of SIA Engineer is all about sharing. As I mentioned, SIA is an open platform. We, we recognize that there's not one program that can do everything, so we really want to give our users the flexibility to plug SIA into as many different workflows as we can. To that end, if a program has an open API, like programs like AllPlan and AllPlan Engineering, Tecla Structures, ProSteel, Revit structures, or even eTabs, we could write direct links via that API. For the bigger BIM process, SIA Engineer is the only engineering analysis software certified for IFC. This gives us, as I demonstrated earlier, a vendor neutral way to exchange BIM models and gives our customers compatibility with over 150 different BIM authoring, viewing, and checking applications. And as we showed, we support common exchange standards like DWG, DXF, VRML, and PDF, just to name a few. Now, one of the issues with interoperability and collaboration has really nothing to do with technology and has to do with the way that models are created. This is an example that we got from Walter P. Moore. The modeling was originally done in Tecla, and when we imported in the physical structural model from Tecla into SIA Engineer, it looked beautiful, but of course when we looked at the analytical model, the designer who created the Tecla model really didn't account for the analysis model. This is a common problem when exchanging BIM models between designers and engineers. In many software programs, it's very tedious and time consuming to clean this issue up, or you don't. You simply just remodel it from scratch. 
In SIA, we have a suite of alignment tools that allow you in a semi-automatic way to fix alignment issues like this. And once the model is aligned, we can either share back the analytical model or we could pass back a dimensionally accurate physical structural model. So as you can see, for engineering offices that are looking to either migrate to or improve their 3D workflows, SIA Engineer can offer a lot of advantages, including fast and efficient modeling, not only being able to efficiently model designs from scratch, but also making it very easy to leverage models from designers, advanced analysis and multi-material design, all centralized into an integrated design environment, a really great suite of tools for automatically creating coordinated documentation, and interoperability, the idea that making it very easy for you to share files with others involved in the design and construction process. For those of you who can stay online, I'd like to open the meeting up and answer a few questions. Again, if you have a question, simply type it in the GoToWebinar chat window. Also, please note my contact information. Please contact me if you're interested in having us host a technical lunch and learn for your firm, or if you're interested in a tryout version so you can take the software for a test drive yourself. All right, the first question has to do with the learning curve. Um, how easy is SIA Engineer to learn? Um, that's a great question, and, uh, and of course there's a lot of variables to that answer. Um, I will say that if you have any CAD or BIM experience, you'll find that the interface and the concepts in SIA Engineer to be very familiar. From my experience, learning the basics is very easy. Um, there's some great free learning uh, resources that we can provide to get you up and running, and of course we're here to help. In addition, for every new firm, uh, we host a two-day on-site training class at no charge. And um, post-training, we really try to go above and beyond when it comes to support. If anyone would like to talk to an existing customer about their learning experience or their support experience, please let me know, and I can connect you with a reference client. OK, there are several questions regarding interoperability. Uh, first, there are no charge for our links. Uh, the, all of our links come free in the expert and professional editions of SIA Engineer. Um, in regards to the quality of the links, the best way to answer that question is really just to set up a tech session where we can demonstrate the links in action and allow you to ask some questions, uh, maybe even send us a file, um, and then we can see what we can do with it. I can say that firms are successfully using these links daily. Um, they seem to have many advantages over the links and other analysis programs. For example, in the Revit link, uh, the mapping table is intelligent. It becomes smarter the more you use it. Uh, the link doesn't seem to suffer from some rounding errors that occur in other softwares. We can handle the exchange of complex geometry, including multi-material structures, uh, curved sloping members, holes in slab, curved shell elements. And it works in both directions. You can start a project in SIA Engineer and move the analysis model to Revit, or you can map a Revit analytical model to SIA Engineer. And it's good for multiple exchanges. This is a criticism I hear a lot about other links. Um, it's good for one or two passes. The link in SIA seems to be very robust and is good for iterative design. In addition, the model cleanup tools I talked about are important for handling uh, and cleaning up analytical models that are coming in from Revit or Tecla. And this is important. Um, I think there's a, a lot of marketing hype when it comes to model exchange. And the reality is that there are a number of issues to consider when deciding on how to share a model. And some of these issues are technical, but I think most have to do little with technology and more uh, they have to do with how the person created the model in the first place and what the model was created for. Um, that's why I think this reference model workflow that I showed you earlier is so important. In this reference model workflow, you're leveraging the information from the designer to help derive an analysis model, but you're not using his analysis model per se, or you're not using his model for analysis per se. And in this workflow, the engineer is responsible for his model, and he doesn't assume the liabilities or the mistakes in the designer's models. Now, th I think there's some exceptions to this. For example, if the engineer is responsible for both the design and the analysis model, um, in this workflow, SIA engineer works perfectly as the engineer can model and run analysis in the same program. Um, and then once the model is checked and optimized, then they can push it downstream for uh, model coordination or final documentation. All right, I see that there are a number of questions um, regarding um, code support. So 
We have support for uh, Euro codes, uh, US codes, Indian codes, Brazil codes. Um, as I mentioned, we're currently in development of Russia and Chinese codes. In regards to the IBC codes, we have very complete support for steel, both hot rolled and cold form, um, as well as concrete, um, mild reinforced concrete. In the Euro codes, we also support uh, pre post tensioning and um, steel connections, uh, both of which are in development for the United States. And again, a nice feature of SIA is this ability to um, really go beyond the internal checks that we have, um, either linking in Excel checks or using this new open check environment to be able to write your own checks um, that then link to the, the modeling in SIA engineer. All right, uh, one last question. Uh, does SIA engineer run on a Macintosh? Um, well, we do have clients, um, old structures in New York City is one that comes to mind that uh, runs SIA engineer on a Mac, but it's not a native Mac OS application. Um, it actually runs under uh, Parallels or Boot Camp. But in regards to the system requirements, the recommended system requirements are, are very reasonable. Uh, an Intel dual core processor or comparable um, and four gigs of RAM, um, something you'll kind of find in the middle of the road laptop these days. Uh, the solver is 64-bit, so you'll see some advantages if you're running a 64-bit version of Windows, and it's also multi-threaded, so if you have more processors, then um, we could take advantage of the processors. And lastly, for larger offices, we do have a floating network license available so that multiple engineers can share licenses. Uh, you don't have to have uh, one license for every engineer in the office. Okay, well, that concludes today's webinar. I think we've given you a pretty good overview of the benefits that CA Engineer has to offer for firms who are wanting to work in 3D and participate in today's collaborative uh, model-based workflows. Again, please note my contact information and email me if you have any questions or if you'd like to arrange a more technical demonstration for your office. And also, keep an eye out in your inbox for additional webinars from Nemechek. All right, thank you and have a great day.